Okay, I know it's pretty easy and there's tons and tons of tutorials all over the place for it, but I'm going to do one because I find that every tutorial keeps missing steps. So to port forward something, first you need to know what the port is. And for me, I'm just using as an example, I'm using BitComet. Um, it can be anything, usually sharing programs. I know that Minecraft has a server thing out and a lot of people are trying to port forward that you gotta find out what it is. Usually it's gonna be under an option somewhere in tools and no matter what program, usually under a connection or a download. You're basically looking for a listen port and a number. And you probably just want to copy that so you know that and you have that ready to go. You need to know what your IP address is. And easy way to do that is either go to accessories, command prompt, or just do start run cmd and you're going to type in ip config ip config that's going to tell you what your ip address is i'm on a router so mine is of course going to begin with 192.168.1 and then whatever number i am in the chain and right now i'm number two this sometimes will change so if you set up your port forwarding and it's working great and all of a sudden one day it's not Check your IP address to make sure it didn't switch you. Once in a while it changes. I don't know why. And I'm sure there's a way to fix it, but it's not that big of a deal. Next step is to get into your router. Um, I haven't seen a router that wasn't these numbers, but I'm sure it exists. If it does, just Google what your number is or check your documentation. But from what I've seen, uh, it doesn't matter what brand it is, your router is always going to be 192.168.11. So 192.168.1.1. It's going to come up with a login. Mine is just generic admin and a password. And OK. I have a Netgear router. Uh, Linksys router is very, very similar. And I'll show you the difference in two seconds. As far as Netgear is concerned, they've made port forwarding easy to find right down on the left here, port forwarding, port triggering. You can see I already have my desktop set up to use Bitcom, and I have Minecraft here because my girlfriend uses it. And what I want to do here is ignore this nonsense up here and just do an add a custom service. And I'll call it uh, laptop bit for the big comment usage on laptop. This one, I just leave it both. This is where you remember that port. We copied it. We're going to paste it right here with a control V. And this is where we checked what number I'm at. And we saw that I'm at dot two. That was through the IP address. And we're going to click apply. And that is it. Now that's how you do it with the, the Netgear. I no longer have a Linksys router, but I do have two images to quickly bring up to give you an idea. Linksys, your main screen looks something like this. Your generic main screen here. And you want to go to Applications and Gaming. And under Applications and Gaming, you'll get your option for Port Forwarding. Because Application Gaming, Port Range Forward, it's basically the same thing. Type your name, the start and end ports are pretty much the same. I don't know why you would need to do different numbers, but for everything, just use the same number on both. Leave this as both. Again, change your zero to the number that you saw your IP address ending in, and then click Enable, and below will, you'll see an Apply. It's pretty much the same thing. And any other brand router, it's not going to be like one's going to be totally different from another. You basically have to be able to accomplish the same thing. So just look under Wireless, look under ports, whatever. You'll find it. Now, a lot of them, the problem is, a lot of the, the tutorials, and the, if you Google it, how to port forward, they kind of leave it at that, and you're done. Well, I found with one modem and one router that that was fine. I was good to go. With the current modem I have, I found that it needs port forwarding as well. So, you have to log into your modem, because the router's now port forwarded. That one that you're the port is open. It's good to go. The modem is still locked. So we're going to open up another window here. 
And if you don't know your uh, modem's IP address, check your documentation. If you're like me, you've lost it, and just Google Google the modem. Just go to look at the back of the actual modem. It'll probably give you a model number, and just look it up. Mine is ten zero zero one. And you'll probably have a login, same thing. If you've never logged in, assume it's admin and probably no password. And mine is crap. But anyway, mine is here. And where mine happened to be located, and I didn't know where it was. You know, it was a new modem. Just look for it. It's going to be the same type of language somewhere. Mine happened to be under NAT. And then I found port forwarding. It'll be somewhere. It'll be called port forwarding. If you can't find it, just look for it. The point here you have to make is you actually have to open the port for the router because the router already has it open. You need to tell the modem to let the router have that port open as well. So you got to go to your router. On your router, it's probably going to be a simple screen like router status or or like, you know, the home page when you first log in, something simple. And what you're looking for is the IP address of the router itself that the that the modem has given it and the modem that I have has given the router 10002 because it's 001 it's gave the router 002 so we go into the modem we're gonna say create this port forwarding on 10002 add don't worry about service name because it's just a bunch of waste of time nonsense that they put in there just to confuse everyone so now it's worthless because for some reason it opened in port 80, who knows why. Go to modify and give it a quick name. I'm going to call it again laptop bit for laptop bit comment. Again, paste that same number. And now that number is being cleared completely by the modem and completely by the router. So it has a clear pass all the way through. And that is that. This will probably be different on every single modem, I'm sure, just because they try to make things complicated to annoy people but you're gonna look for port forwarding you're gonna look for the same thing there's gonna be a service name a start and end port and the IP address just keep in mind when you're on your router the IP address that you want to put in is what your computer is when you did the IP config and you got the dot two when you're looking at the modem it's gonna be for the router whatever the IP address the router got now, if you do not have a router, obviously the IP address will be whatever your IP address is. You know, it's just down an entire step. Life is easy for you. Congratulations. So there we have it. That's pretty much it. You can go to your program and see that for me, it's showing me two greens. That means that the port is completely cleared. 1436, uh, whatever the hell it is. Um, for other programs, it might not be that easy to check and verify, so what you can just do is Google something like port checking, just try like port forward checker, I don't know, it's something along those lines, and I'm sure something's going to pop up that'll let you figure out if your port's actually open. You know, right away, I, I didn't know what to look for, I just wrote port forward checker, and I have open port check tool, uh, you know, open port check, port forwarding guideline, blah, 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 blah. So you're going to get something to double check it. And I found that with uh, the Minecraft one because I couldn't, there, there, there's no little thing that says, yes, you have it open, no, you don't have it open. So I just used one of those checker things and it told me it was open. And then I eventually got the stuff to work. But that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think I left anything out. And the end, fade to black.